Welcome to Rondau Valley United Methodist Church's remote service for Sunday, September 11th, 2022. On this day, we remember the attacks that were, took place on this day in 2001, the lives lost, and the heroic sacrifices made by so many in the line of duty that day as well as in the years since. Tonight at the church at 5.30, we will be having our second Sunday supper, which as always is free to everyone, 5.30. You will notice that there is a woeful lack of variety in today's speakers. If you are willing to read for at least the pre-recorded service, you currently have your choice of any week's readings between September 18th and November 20th. I will try to post updates on rbumc.org too. There is a print sign-up sheet at the church. You could even, if you're not in Stone Ridge or vicinity, you could record yourself on a phone and transmit it electronically. If this sounds like something you're interested in or curious about, email to rvmethodist at gmail.com, rvmethodist at gmail.com. Finally, our autumn newsletter is out as of today. It is posted on the website rvumc.org and just go to the newsletter listing on the left, and that will take you to the page where the newsletters live. Welcome, thank you for joining us. Let us now turn to our call to worship. As a shepherd seeks a lost sheep, so God seeks and saves the lost. Like a woman who searches for a lost coin, until it is found. So God rejoices over one soul restored to wholeness. As a father receives a returning wayward son, so God welcomes us and lets the past be the past. Therefore, let us praise God in thanksgiving that we are received. Let us receive and welcome and rejoice over one another in the name of Jesus Christ. This morning's opening prayer is from John Birch at faithandworship.com. Bless the hands that bring wholeness to lives blighted by sickness. Bless the saints who in sad and desperate places bring a sense of hopefulness Bless the Christians facing daily opposition, showing a faithful witness. Bless the generosity of the rich and powerful for the gift of thoughtfulness. Bless the peacemakers, working in conditions that are often hazardous. Bless the politicians, whether good or bad, for decisions affecting all of us. Bless our words and actions as we carry your light into places shrouded in darkness. Bless your children, whoever they might be, with the warmth of your love and grace. Amen. Yeah. 
comes from the updated edition of the New Revised Standard Version, Jeremiah chapter 4. At that time it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, a hot wind comes from me out of the bare heights in the desert toward the daughter of my people, not to winnow or cleanse, a wind too strong for that. Now it is I who speak in judgment against them. For my people are foolish, they do not know me. They are stupid children, they have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil, but do not know how to do good. I looked on the earth and it was complete chaos, and to the heavens, and they had no light. I looked on the mountains, and they were quaking, and all the hills moved to and fro. I looked and there was no one at all, and all the birds of the air had fled. I looked and the fruitful land was a desert, and all its cities were laid in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. For thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be a desolation, yet I will not make a full end. Because of this the earth shall mourn, and the heavens above grow black. For I have spoken, I have purposed, I have not relented, nor will I turn back. The epistle reading this morning is from 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 12 to 17. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he considered me faithful and appointed me to his service even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience as an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This morning's Gospel reading comes from... Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Jesus describes that intense joy with the parables of the recovery of a lost silver coin and of a single wandering sheep to scribes and Pharisees who are grumbling at his welcome of, gasp, sinners. What's not to love here, says Jesus? When the lost are found, amazing grace in action, isn't that good news? 
As you likely know, gospel means good news. And Jesus embodies good news, good news for everybody, including sinners, especially sinners. And guess what? A resistance to accepting news as it is conveyed is not just a 21st century American thing. The grumbling witnesses to Jesus' ministry may not be marching out alternative facts or yelling fake news in so many words, but they're not at all convinced that welcoming sinners and eating that with them is at all a good thing. As with the indignant older son in the parable of the prodigal, which comes right after this passage, the feeling of being left out is only part of the perceived insult. It's seeing others, undeserving others, being welcomed, being celebrated, being loved and forgiven. That seems to be the biggest insult. Why do they get good news and a welcome celebration? Hard as it may be to wrap our minds around, the good news of Jesus Christ really is offered to everyone. We are a part of the story. It's not like the news of big world events that makes the broadcast news in the front pages, but may or may not affect us personally. Actually, it sometimes seems like a surprise when notable historical news does affect us. My daughter observed a few months into the pandemic, I'm tired of living through history. It was much more convenient for me when it was in the past. Big historical event news, such as the death on Thursday of Queen Elizabeth, and even the September 11th attacks on the U.S., are out there mostly. I think most of us get along pretty well operating under the assumption that most news involves other people. So for those publicly identified as sinners, whose experience, if any, of being the center of attention had likely been negative, to be told that this good news is for you, you are forgiven, you are found, you are loved, that comes as a shock. That comes as a shock not only to the sinners, but also to the publicly identified righteous folks. Sadly, it seems that the joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents is not echoed among the righteous. The joy does, however, get picked up by the forgiven sinners. The verses you heard earlier from 1 Timothy are just bursting with gratitude and awe that God's grace in Jesus Christ had been extended to Paul. We may remember Paul as the apostle to the Gentiles, a driven evangelist who was probably responsible for more of the spread of Christian faith and growth of the early church than any other individual. 1 Timothy remembers Paul as foremost of sinners. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, he writes, a persecutor, and a man of violence, I received mercy, because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. Paul appreciates that it is through God's relentless determination to welcome sinners into the fold through Jesus the Christ that he was forgiven and given a new life and identity as an apostle. In me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience as an example. The utmost patience. Relentless determination, persistence. Maybe like a shepherd searching for that lost sheep. Like a woman combing her house for that one lost coin. 
witnessing in real life such patience and devotion to seeing the job through can still stop us in our tracks. A lot of the coverage of Queen Elizabeth's life has come around to quoting a pledge she made on her 21st birthday while traveling with her family. She was still the Princess Elizabeth, five years still from becoming queen, and was in South Africa. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. It is astonishing to recognize that she actually did live up to that pledge for the next 75 years. And who can ever forget the dedication to duty of the emergency workers on September 11, 2001, dedication that helped to save the lives of those who were able to evacuate the towers and the Pentagon, but which cost the lives of at least 415 emergency workers in New York alone. According to the article on Wikipedia, those who died while fulfilling their duties at the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001, included 343 firefighters, 37 police officers of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, Police Department, 23 New York City police officers, eight emergency medical technicians and paramedics, three New York State court officers, a patrolman from the New York Fire Patrol, and one special agent from the FBI. And the number does not include those who have died from toxic exposures in the years since 2001. Now, sit for a moment with the knowledge that that kind of devotion is how Jesus is loving you. In spite of the worst things you have ever said or done. I don't know what you need to be forgiven, but God not only knows, God offers forgiveness and new life. In Paul's wording, the grace of our Lord overflows. So, sinners repent, yes, but rejoice because the gospel is for you. Amazing grace may be playing in your mind right now, but I'd like to call your attention to another oldie but goodie from the United Methodist Hymnal. It's number 340. Come ye sinners, poor and needy. Come ye sinners, poor and needy, weak and wounded, sick and sore. Jesus ready stands to save you, full of pity, love, and power. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me with his arms in the arms of my dear Savior. Oh, there are 10,000 charms. Come ye weary, heavy laden, lost and ruined by the fall. If you tarry till you're better, you will never come at all. When the Lord says, come as you are, he means it. Our Lord can get over our imperfections a lot sooner than we can. Let's look at one another through the eyes of Jesus. Everyone deserves to be seen. Today's pastoral prayer for the anniversary of 9-11 is from Presbyterian Outlook by Jill Duffield and is adapted and used by their permission. God of grace and God of glory, on this anniversary of the terrorist attacks of September 11th, grant us the wisdom to remember the lessons of that tragic day that make us more Christ-like. Drive away from us any vengeful urges, any hate-filled sentiment, any whisper from within or without, 
that goads us to return evil for evil. As we look back and recall where we were on that fateful day, fateful day, may our memories compel us to acts of kindness, words of love, and demonstrations of community. May the images of helpers, firefighters, police officers, pastors, office workers, ordinary citizens inspire us to be helpers too. May texts and voicemails of I love you and you are everything to me assure us that love always has the last word and we should never wait to say it. As the world still heaves with violence and war seems never to end, assure us, Prince of Peace, that ultimately crying and mourning will be no more. In the midst of suffering, our own and the world's, speak again, Creator God, your word of life and its goodness. We pray for those whose lives were forever changed on September 11th, 2001. Grant comfort to those who grieve. Strengthen those who struggle with questions that remain unanswered. Assure those who worry that they should have said or done something differently that you gather up all the fragments of our lives, bless and use them in ways that heal. We thank you, Lord of all, for the people who every day put their lives in danger in order to protect and serve others. We pray for all first responders, for medical personnel, police officers, firefighters, and others who never know what a shift at work will bring on any given day. Grant them wisdom, courage, and rest. As we consider that fall day years ago, help us hold to the examples of goodness that emerged out of the horror, strangers banding together to prevent more carnage, people lining up to donate blood, congregations opening doors to offer respite for anyone and everyone, people offering comfort and care to those they knew and those they'd never met. May these acts of mercy in our lives ripple through history, revealing your power to bring redemption, reconciliation, and resurrection out of the depths of despair and death. We are grateful for the new life born since the attacks, for those beloved children who don't remember that day. We give thanks for the saints who were with us then, but have since gone on to eternal life. When we mark anniversaries of sorrow, together or alone, may they be occasions to discern what truly matters, let go of what really doesn't, and recognize your grace, Almighty God, pervading it all. In the name of Jesus, the light of the world, the Prince of Peace, the Good Shepherd, our friend and our helper, we pray these things as we pray also as he has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever.
to Jesus. Rise and go in peace. Amen.